October did not go according to plan for the Minnesota Wild. They check in with a 3-4-2 and two record heading to November. We'll take a look at the November schedule as well as anointing the Lockdown Wild Player of the Month for October. All that and more on today's episode of Lockdown Wild. You're locked on wild. Your daily podcast on the Minnesota Wild. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, this is Brandon Duham, and this is Locked On Wild. What's happening, everybody? Welcome into another episode of Locked On Wild, your daily Minnesota Wild podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you, as always, for making Lockdown Wild your first listen each and every day. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube and your favorite podcast platform so you don't miss out on any of our content throughout the course of the week, plus pre- and post-game content after pretty much every game this season as well. Today's episode of Lockdown Wild is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning 50 $5 $5 money line bet. That's 150 bucks if your team wins. Visit fanduel.com slash locked on to get started. On today's episode of Locked on Wild, we dive into the November schedule with Zach Zeman. We'll also anoint the Locked on Wild Player of the Month for October and some predictions for how things will go in the month of November. Hint, hopefully they go better than October did. My name is Seth Topol, your daily Minnesota Wild insider. As mentioned, he's back. Zach Zeman is with us here discussing November, recapping October a little bit. Most importantly, Zach, what's happening? Yeah, if I'm great, honestly, but it was a little scary ending to the month of November, or October. Geez, uh, no pun intended there. Uh, yeah, those three losses at the end were not, were not fun to watch, but hey, I mean, that's what happens when you're down on a lot of players um, and have no money to do anything. So as we move on to, we just are here in November, you know, it's time to move on, flip the page, flip the calendar, let's go. New month, maybe new wild. Yeah, we hope. We hope that uh, Matt Boldy coming back will help uh, give the team a jump start. Jared Spurgeon uh, working his way back practice but he's still a little ways off himself uh before we dive into the schedule let's talk about the uh, lockdown wild player of the month for october through the poll out on x for the listeners to let their voices be heard and uh, so how we'll do this is i will vote zach will vote and if we need a tiebreaker we go to the fans so the nominees and the nominees are Jewel Erickson Eck, who finished the month of October with uh, five goals. He also had five assists for a neat and tidy 10 points in nine games. You also had Ryan Hartman, six goals, three assists, nine total points in the month of October. Uh, Also getting a nomination, Pat Maroon who had one goal, six assists, seven total points in the month of October. And finishing it off, Marco Rossi, who finished the month with three goals, one assist, four total points uh, in nine October games. I was trying to do the uh, Oscar nomination voice, and I forgot what it sounded like, so I just kind (laughs) of went with it. (laughs) <laughs> didn't sound like it, but nonetheless, uh, some worthy candidates I'll start and I'm going with this because I think his amount of goals was what we were hoping to see early on in the season. Uh, I'm going with Ryan Hartman who had six goals to lead the team. This is what he wasn't able to do last year. It took him forever to get going. A ton of penalties. I mean, he has eight penalty minutes in nine games so far this year. So penalty minutes still there, but uh, he's scoring to start the season. He's the only player on that top line that is in positive territory and plus minus. And so I'm going to go with Ryan Hartman. Jewel Erickson Eck, obviously very worthy, but we expected Jewel Erickson Eck to, uh, to do things along this line and continue to build off of what he's done the last couple of years. Hartman was a wild card. And so the fact that he's leading the team in goals, 
through the first month of the season is enough for me to uh, to give him the award. Pat Maroon, very worthy. Marco Rossi, very worthy. But uh, I'm going with Hartsey here for October. Zach, what about you? Yeah, I think all those nominations, you know, each played a crucial role in the in the first month. You know, Eck on the power play, just, if you get the puck to him in that slot, it's it's almost game over. He had a couple beautiful goals this month. Um, you know, it, obviously, you, that's exactly what you wish for out of Eric Snack there. Um, so it totally deserves that nomination. Um, and if you told me Marco Rossi would be in a nomination for the player of the month heading or before the season started, I would have been like, really like wow like i, I want to see what what's going to happen and you know he absolutely exceeded every expectation i had i think he's starting to blossom into the potential he was guaranteed when we drafted him and i think that um you know as a wild fan everything you you could have wished for out of his out of his you know month is is absolutely exceeding every expectation absolute stud and you know you know pat maroon is a player that it's like well we're bringing him in here because we got to replace Ryan Reeves. You got to get a big body. Um, and I absolutely love how he dropped the gloves. I think it was in Philly immediately, you know, setting the tone. Um, his chirps against Florida game one came out. It was amazing. Yeah. Like that's, it's just exactly <laughs> what you need out of a player like him. Um, but then you have that shootout attempt in Washington that gets you a little skeptical, <laughs> um, you know, but that can happen. I mean, obviously not a goal scorer, like, uh, got like six assists. I think is that what you said? Yeah. Like that's like all you can ask for out of a player like him, especially with his first year with this team. But Ryan Hartman, by all means, is my player of the month. Um, you know, obviously he's a top line center. Like he got Kirill and Zuki on his right and left. Um, and it's just Apple machines all around him. And if they find yeah. him, which they usually do, it's it's obviously going to turn out uh, the way it does in goals. And that's exactly how it went. I think Ryan Hartman really like opened my eyes a little bit. Obviously there's not like a lot of expectations for him. I feel like because he's got Kirill and Zuki on that line, but yeah, seriously, I think, I think he, he proved himself uh, a couple penalty minutes, but Hey, um, you know, that's just who he is. He's a chippy guy. He gets there. I mean, that's just, it's just what he is. Um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Point point machine. And he's my number one for sure. Yep. Uh, let's go with the fan voting. Now there are, there is still some time left on this poll, but um, fans going with Marco Rossi, uh, with 37.3% of the vote, Ryan Hartman taking second with 32.5, Jewel Erickson Eck 20.5 and third, and Pat Maroon at 9.6% taking up the uh, last spot. Um, one tweet or post, I, I'm going with tweet, I don't care. Yeah, um, honestly, I know it's, it's a coin it's flip still, these days. It's still Twitter to me. Um, Blue Eyes White Stallion on Twitter says, I voted Marco, but it's truly Hartman. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> so that's uh, that's kind of where the fans are at. But yeah, we're going with Ryan Hartman. So uh, congratulations to Hartsey. He gets the uh, the fun Locked on Wild Player of the Month graphic, which you will uh, find on social media later uh, here when you're listening to this episode. Uh, we'll talk about well, who we think will be the player of the month for November, but we've got a lot to talk about on the schedule. 12 games in the docket, including a grueling start to the month. We'll talk about all that as we continue today's episode of Locked on Wild after this. Today's episode of Locked on Wild is brought to you by Sleeper. A new NHL season brings all sorts of possibilities. Whether it be Kirill Kaprizov getting to the 50-goal mark or the Vegas Golden Knights hosting the Stanley Cup for a second straight season. And you could win big by playing Daily Fantasy Hockey on Sleeper, the official Daily Fantasy app of the Locked On NHL Network. Sleeper is our number one choice for Daily Fantasy sports, especially Daily Fantasy Hockey, because with Sleeper you can win 100 times your cash in Daily Fantasy Hockey contests. All you have to do is pick whether stud players like Connor McDavid, Nathan McKinnon, Sidney Crosby, or Alex Ovechkin will record more or less than their sleeper projections for things like goals, assists, saves, plus, minus, or more in a given game. It is so easy. You can make all of your selections in less than 60 seconds. That's right. In the time it has taken me to go through this ad, you can already have your sleeper lineup set. Use promo code LOCKDOWNNHL, and you'll get up to a $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. That's code locked on NHL, 
See Sleeper's terms of use for details and locational availability. Welcome back to today's episode of Locked on Wild. Once again, we thank you for making Locked on Wild your first listen each and every day. Load it up in the hopper for later. Today is a pregame preview talking about the New Jersey Devils. Tonight is the Minnesota Wilds back home taking on the Devils uh, for round two of that home and home with a week in between, which is super normal for the NHL schedule. Uh, so you can hear about all that, and then we will have a uh, postcast for you after all the action is finished uh, and hopefully the wild able to get a dub at the X uh, taking a look at the November schedule with Zach Zeman. Zach, let's take a look. We've got 12 games on the docket for the month of November. And before we go game by game, let's just pick out the obviously big highlights of the month of November. It includes the trip to Sweden. The Sweden Showcase, I think it is called. The Wild will be playing the Ottawa Senators first on Saturday, November 18th. That'll be a 10 a.m. start. And then on uh, Sunday the 19th, they play the Toronto Maple Leafs. That'll be a 7 a.m. puck drop our time because they're in Sweden and it's a nine-hour time difference. Uh, so obviously that's the highlight from a geographic perspective, but we get to see the Buffalo Sabres this month, the Dallas Stars. The Colorado Avalanche, the Detroit Red Wings, uh, St. Louis, Nashville. Uh, so which of the games on the schedule is the highlight for you? Uh, you know, I this is the, the month where the Central Division opponents see their first time against the Minnesota Wild. I think Dallas, obviously that playoff uh, loss last year uh, is, a, is a big game to look at the 12th there on a Sunday. Um, you also get the Blues the avalanche and the predators. And I think that's what your record starts to show um, in the division. And you can start to make a name of yourself. I think those are like the four highlighted games, the central division. It means the most. Um, those are the games you absolutely have to win. And I kind of like how they're later in the month where you kind of get Boldy back in the lineup there. Hopefully he plays tonight. That's what's expected. Um, and, you know, he can start to make his, his rounds, get his, get his time in. Um, this lineup can start to solidify itself for once. It feels like it's been jumbled every single day this this year so far. So, yeah. you know, on the 12th there, you get the first Central Division matchup against the Dallas Stars. That's a huge game, and uh, I think that's the biggest one of the month, honestly. Yeah, I, I'm i going to go with the Detroit game because the Red Wings are one of the hot teams in the Eastern Conference right now. They're second in their division, and it's a team that for the last few years we've been looking at and saying, wow, really? Detroit is bad again? Like, what's what's going on? And now this year, finally, they're good. So I'm circling that one. But you are spot on with those central division collisions as um, I, I think Paul Allen coined that phrase. Central like division that. collision. It's just got that nice. It rolls off the tongue. But those games are all important. And a rematch against the Dallas Stars, especially with Dallas playing well again this, what's what's new? They're playing well again this season. Um, that's going to be a very critical game uh, here in this stretch as well. And so what we're going to do, we're going to go through six games at a time, um, and we'll just take a look and uh, what we think will happen for the Minnesota Wild in each game. And uh, then we'll see what we come up with for a total record uh, when we're all said and done. So starts with tonight against the New Jersey Devils. And honestly, it's and and Kevin Gorg talked about this in uh, yesterday's episode. Uh, this is the right time, I think, to be playing this Devils team. They're still very, very talented, but it's not it's just not as precise and as sharp of a Devils team as it was last year. And so it's a team that you get to play at home. And it's a team that's other than the power play, they're they're pretty subpar in uh, a lot of different areas. Now that being said, I am picking the Devils to win in overtime in this game, and so I think if you can get a point against a team like New Jersey, if you can win or get a point, that's that's huge. Um, I just I think the Devils still um, are going to cause some problems for the Minnesota Wild, and so first official game of the month i'm predicting an overtime loss yeah i mean you see jack hughes again and it's like this defensive lacking minnesota wild team 
but it's on home ice this time. And so it's a lot of, a lot of, you know, like, can the wild show out is Boldy really going to pop out here and, and show his worth and, and get back in this lineup. Um, and I think the devils are obviously scary. They just, I mean, the wild were leading in New Jersey and, and, you know, it's just got away from them and that's just what can happen. Uh, you know, power play is lacking and the devils are the devils and that's just, what's going to happen. You know, they're still good. I mean, we're only a couple games into the season. Um, you know, I, I like that. I like that take that Gorg said, um, but yeah, I mean, it's the devils. They're, they're good. They're, they're, they're like penciled in already. Um, yeah. Absolute beauties on their team. Uh, and now, and then you host new or New York, uh, the Rangers, and that's a team who currently has two losses. So it's like, yeah. if you talk about the first two games in this month and must get like, they must, must leave these two games with points. Like it's, or else like all hell, all heck's going to break loose. You know, it's like, it's just those two starts at yeah. home. Uh, you know, you gotta, you gotta do something here and it's, it's a wake up call for sure. And I think having those two tough juggernauts in the beginning of a month is definitely going to say something about this team. You know what? I'm going to change it because I think this team is going to get a, a nice boost from Matt Boldy being back in the lineup. I think they will beat. I think they'll beat the devils. I think they will find a way to keep things more five on five. I think Boldy gives them a lift. I think they play well in front of the home fans. So I'm going to I'm going to say that they beat the Devils on Thursday night because I went through all the stats for the preview episode with uh, Johnny Lazarus, who covers the the Rangers. They have like a 43. They have like a 35 percent power play. They have like an 85 percent penalty kill. They're giving up two goals per game on average. They're scoring over three goals on average per game. I that's an L. The New York Rangers game at home is an L for me because not only all that, but you've also got Igor Shesterkin, who is just capable of standing on his head every time he's on the ice. Now, that being said, one and one on that home stands mm -hmm. would be marvelous because those are very two very tough opponents. And so if they can go one and one in those first two games of this month before heading on the road, that's an absolute win for me. Yeah, absolutely. I think the, the, you know, the biggest thing you can do on a home and home is learn. <laughs> and I think, right. that, I mean, these two off days like yesterday and the day before are huge for this team. And, and, you know, it's going to be interesting what they come out with tonight. And I think, um, you know, if, if you said exactly what, what can happen here is, is run away with the point or even win, it's tremendous for this team. And you can definitely afford to drop that game against New York. Um, but then you play them later next, the next week. So, I mean, and then we we go into the three straight away games on the East Coast again, um, and which obviously didn't end well, uh, you know, last month. And you got the the Islanders on the seventh, the Rangers on the ninth, the the Sabers on the tenth. A couple of winnable games, but it's all just you know determined on how you like attack that road trip. Like, are you coming for vengeance after what you just blew up, you know, last month? You know, it, it, it's it's going to be interesting. You got Boldy now, hopefully at that time. I'd hope so. I mean, we'll see, but. Yeah, it's gonna be interesting. Yeah, that that trip, the three games, the at the Islanders, at the Rangers, and at the Sabers, you're gonna need to get points in two of those games. For sure. The Islanders, the Islanders are a clomp. They play a slower style than the Minnesota Wild do. They have Ilya Samsonov though in goal, which is uh, a problem, and they also have some talented skilled players their power play is is abysmal from what i've been told you got to find a way to win that game because the islanders aren't going to try to speed up the tempo they're going to be comfortable playing it at that style so you got to just live in that slow pace and just own that game you got to win that one you got to beat the buffalo sabers you got to take advantage of a team that is capable of scoring a ton of goals and is struggling to start the season yeah, I think Buffalo is like fun to watch, though. I think that's going to mm -hmm. be a really like battle. I think it's going to be a shootout, like not like nice. natural shootout. Like I don't think. Hopefully, gosh, we get rid of the shootout. But, <laughs> but uh, you know, it's going to be like neck to neck. I think there's like two like equivalent teams. I think the Wild like relate really well to them. Alex Tuck, obviously, the one that got away on that team is juggernaut for them. You know, they got a lot of good guys over there. I think. You sh I mean, if you're in New York for three straight games, you got to win too. I mean, yeah. seriously, you can't go back to the East on another road trip and just be like, all right, let's drop these three. It's like, he, he needs to get points here. This team is is better 
than they are now. Um, and, and it's clear that they're down several key players, Spurgeon, Goligoski, now Goudreau and Boldy's back. So it's like, whew, I mean, the boys are coming back. Like yeah. something's going to change here. And I think that this month is going to see a lot of that. And I hope, I hope it starts early and I hope it starts in New York. Yeah, it's it's a pivotal road trip. And then you follow that up. Welcome to the Dallas Stars um, on the 12th at the XL Energy Center. Um, uh, ironically enough, with as good as the Stars have been, it seems like the Wild either win close or they get their faces caved uh, just because of all the skill and the talent. But Dallas is those top level guys are struggling to start the season. And so, again, opportunity to play a team when they're not as as crisp they're still winning a ton of games. They're still winning every game on their schedule pretty much. And so if I look at those first six, I am going to go as follows. Win against the Devils, loss against the Rangers. I think they can I think they will beat the Islanders and lose to New York. So you're 2 and 2 at that point. I think they will lose in overtime against Buffalo and I think they will lose to Dallas. Now that's the first half of the month. Uh, we've still got the second half to go as well. And so we'll talk about those games and we'll form up our predictions as to what we think the record will be this month for your Minnesota Wild. That's all coming up as we finish today's episode of Lockdown Wilds after this. Today's episode of Locked on Wild is brought to you by Indeed. When you're drafting your fantasy team, do you ever wish you could do the same thing with your business team? If you're building a roster to win the league, you need Indeed. Indeed is the hiring platform where you can attract, interview, and hire all in one place. No need to spend hours on multiple job sites looking for candidates with the right skills when you can do it all with Indeed. Candidates you invite to apply through Instant Match are three times more likely to apply to your job than candidates who only see it in search, according to U.S. Indeed data. And in the 60 seconds we've been talking about Indeed, 16 hires have already been made, according to Indeed data worldwide. Indeed knows when you're growing your own business, you have to make every dollar count. That's why with Indeed, you only pay for quality applications that match your must-have job requirements. Visit Indeed.com slash locked on to start hiring now. Again, Indeed.com slash locked on. That's Indeed.com slash locked on. Terms and conditions apply. Cost per application pricing not available for everyone. Need to hire? You need Indeed. Today's episode is also brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook. You can score early this NFL season with FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That is $150 if your team wins. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action. And for Vikings fans, got to feel like they've got good odds against the Atlanta Falcons this Sunday, even though Kirk Cousins is out, Jaron Hall against Taylor Heineke, I would say the matchup goes to the Vikings in that quarterback battle. So place your $5 money line bet on the Vikings, and when you win, you can use that $150 on spreads, player props, over-unders, and more. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to kick off the NFL season. Again, FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. Final segment of today's episode of Lockdown Wild. Once again, we thank you for making Lockdown Wild your first listen each and every day. Seth Topol joined by Zach Zeman today. And Zach, we uh, after the Dallas Stars game, the Wild are heading overseas. The Sweden Showcase, which will uh, feature like the Wild have a, a large portion of Swedish players and so call me optimistic but uh, I think we see a little bit of a showcase from the Minnesota Wild in these two teams the the Senators they're off to an an up and down start so are most teams in the league and then you've got a chance to get revenge in the Toronto Maple Leafs Mm -hmm. call me crazy but I think the Wilds uh, put on a little bit of a show for uh for the Swedish fans. Yeah. Talk about home ice. This is literally home ice for like six players. <laughs> I mean, 
I mean, I think they're going to show out and I think there's a lot of wild fans over there. Um, a lot of, like a lot of cool media opportunities too. I think, you know, if the wild are on national television at 7 AM and 10 AM, I'll be there. I'll be watching it. You know, I'm not going to be there, but I'll be watching it. And I think that, you know, the wild are going to put on a show. It's, it's literally their home. If you really think about it. Um, no, I think that Senators game is, it has to be a win. And then you get, uh, Toronto again after losing to them seven to four. So it's like you got to get revenge. And obviously, like these teams, we're going to keep a close eye on these teams the first couple weeks of this month. Um, there's going to be a lot of trends with literally every team that the Wild play this month. So you never know how they're trending. And I think that, you know, currently the Senators are, well, as of yesterday, not like in a good light right now. And I think that, I don't know, it's just like a, it just does affect, I have a feeling it's going to affect that team. And, in the front office and all that stuff. And I think it's, it's like the elephant in the room right now on NHL news. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, that better be a win. Sweden's going to be amazing. I'm excited to watch those games, to wake up at the crack of dawn and, and get on and watch hockey. Like what could go wrong? And then you got the Vikings after the, right. Do they play? I don't yeah. Know. I think I, I'm sure. That. I'm sure they do. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Against after that Maple Leafs game. So it'll be a fun Sunday for sure. Yeah, it's a it's a great way to spend a Sunday just watching a ton of sports. Uh, after that Sweden trip, the Wild then uh, host the Colorado Avalanche on Good Friday, or Black Friday. I knew I was going to do that too. I said in my Fridays. head, it's Black Friday. It's the <laughs> shopping one. Um, they host them on Black Friday, and it's a Colorado Avalanche team that's off to a good start. They've got a ton of high end talent and. It's it's a matchup that has provided some struggles for the Minnesota Wild. You hope by this point that the team starts to feel a little bit of a sense of urgency um, to, hey, we got to we got to make sure that we are starting to uh, get things picked up and uh, and playing better. Um, I'm I'm very interested to see how that game goes, especially who is back by that point, because, you know, there's a very good likelihood that Jared Spurgeon will be back. Right by that point, which will be, that'd be a huge boost to going up against the avalanche. So that's a tough game. You've got then the Detroit Red Wings, which will be a tough game, but then the close to the month, this is an opportunity to uh, really kind of end things on a high note. You've got the St. Louis blues, the Nashville predators and the Chicago, Chicago Blackhawks to start September. But those two games in November, St. Louis and Nashville, Two teams not off to great starts. The St. Louis Blues have looked pretty bad. They can't score on the power play, so you don't have to worry about them coming alive. Two good opportunities to finish the month with wins against division opponents. Yeah, I mean, I've seen a lot of these Blues games because I'm I'm in the state of Missouri, and you know their whole team is just leaving Jordan Bennington out to die. Like it's <laughs> it's it's so hard to watch that team, and I think that you know the Predators and Blues at the end of the month is is like icing on the cake. Whereas like at this point of the month, the lineup should be like somewhat solid. Um, hopefully Spurgeon's back at this time. And I think you can really take advantage of those last two games against central division opponents. And, you know, even if all the other games go wrong and, and there's still struggles, at least you get two divisional wins. And I think that's a good way to end the month. Uh, so let's, let's look at, let's go game by game with record. I'm going to go win against the devils loss against the Rangers win against the Islanders, then another loss against the Rangers. So we're two and two at that point. I'm calling overtime loss to the Sabres, two, two and one loss to Dallas. So two, three and one. I, I Can I interrupt? Yeah. One of those has to be a win. Like if we're at that point where it's like, you're just dropping those games, like something's wrong. Yeah. And like something needs to be changed, but I like, I like your take so far. I'm, I'm going to listen, but if that happens, Oh my goodness. Yeah, it's it's not uh not gonna be great. Um, so we're two, three, and one at that point. I think they win both in Sweden. I really do. Um, Ottawa and Toronto. So they'll be four, three, and one at that point. I think they can sneak a point against Colorado. Um, four, three, and two. I'll go lost to Detroit, four, four, and two even though the wild played them pretty well last season. And then I think they beat St. Louis and Nashville. So six, four and two, 500, um, essentially in November. And, uh, 
if you get everybody back and you look at the December schedule and uh, December starts pretty winnable, ends a little tougher with a couple games against Boston, I think December is the month where this thing starts to really get steam pushed uphill. Yeah, absolutely. I think the ceiling for me is like seven wins. I think that, you know, if if Boldy comes back and I think seriously he's a centerpiece to this offense. Yeah. Uh, we, I mean, we've seen what he's done last year. and It's insane. Um, you know, and obviously Spurgeon, if he comes back, I mean, the last couple of games this month have to be wins. And I think that this team can finally start to get some sense of some flow. Um, you know, it just depends on when these players return. I have a ceiling at seven because I'm a very optimistic person. Um, but we'll see what happens. Uh, I'm ex- so excited for that Sweden. And I, I've like waited forever for that. And I think that if, it, if the Wild win both of those, then all my worries are gone. And the beautiful part about schedule prognosticating is that there are people out there who are saying it's 12 and 0. There are people out there who are saying it's 0 and 12. <laughs> it's going to be somewhere in between. And yeah, it's it's just we we kind of go, I think, in the optimistic route mm-hmm. because the assumption is, is that, you know, Spurgeon will be back maybe within a week. And so, again, if this team can get to where they're playing 500 by the end of the month of November and rattle off a couple of wins and then really push it into gear in December, I, I think that's I think that's all you can really hope for at this point. Um, but obviously as we do, because we cover pretty much every game of the season, we will course correct. We'll adjust, we'll react, we'll adapt, we'll thrive or we'll survive. Um, all the options that you can find here at, uh, locked on wild, uh, final thing, Zach prediction for who will be the player of the month for November. Jewel Erickson Eck. Let's go. I think hopefully this power play can start to get some some spark and i think if eck is in the slot like he has been recently those goals are his matt boldy let's go i was gonna say that i was gonna say that i was like oh let's see but i'll I'll give you that one i think boldy lights it up back on the ice i'm not saying march of last season but you know eight goals in 12 games would be ecstatic oh yeah so we'll see there like it's yeah like he's it is so crucial to this team and i think the whole lineup's gonna buzz around him coming back and and that's honestly the storyline for november is when are these players coming back and can they gain momentum because of their absence now being gone well said my friends that'll do it for today's episode of locked on wild listeners as mentioned make sure you check out the pregame preview for tonight's game against the new jersey devils Make sure you follow Locked on Wild wherever you listen to your podcast so you don't miss out on the widest array of content that exists in the Minnesota Wild podcast landscape. Pre-game, intermission reports, post-game, full episodes, you name it, we've got it. You can find it all at Locked on Wild, so make sure you do. Make sure you subscribe. We'll see you tomorrow with a new episode of Locked on Wild. We are your team every day, part of the Locked on Podcast Network.